it's the last day of Black History Month, Carter G. Woodson's Black History Month, and I want to do a bit of a history with Clay segment. Okay. Uh, this me. combines history and pop culture and really important. Mm. So today is the day, 84 years ago, Hattie McDaniel became the first black person to win an Academy Award. She won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for her role in Gone with the Wind. She played a character named Mammy. This is a movie that I don't like at all, in no way, shape, or form, but this is a part of history, and it goes beyond that character and goes more to Hattie McDaniel. Mm -hmm. So I want to give a little bit of background with Hattie McDaniel. She was born to... uh, two formerly enslaved people in 1893. Her father was a Union soldier in the Civil War. Mm. She grew up in poverty, but she was attracted to the stage. And by the 1920s, she was in a lot of uh, vaudeville shows and menstrual shows. For folks that don't know what a menstrual show is, it would be when you were in blackface, even though you were a black person, they would disturbingly have you in blackface Mm. And you would perform in a stereotypical way. Um, Hattie McDaniel, and along with others, would sometimes be in white face as well. Mm. Uh, so it just goes to show you, at the core of it, uh, art and culture was even rooted in racism. Right? Yeah. Very disturbing. So she moves to L.A. in the 1930s uh, looking for a career in Hollywood. And she begins playing a lot of enslaved people and a lot of... Uh, domestic servants, which they called maids back then. Mm -hmm. And this was really the only work basically that black folks could get, especially black women, right? Then comes Gone with the Wind. Mm. So this is about some rich white folks in Georgia, Civil War hits, and the narrative is that you're going to feel sorry for them because they're losing everything, whatever, who cares? But there is this role of Mammy, and a lot of black folks, black women, are going for this role, right? First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt wrote the film's producer of Gone with the Wind and said her maid should play the role. Her maid should play the role. You had the First Lady involved in the casting. Yeah. So Bing Crosby... Bing Crosby, like an old school singer of that time, he actually suggests Hattie McDaniel for the role. Mm. Hattie McDaniel auditions, and she kills it. Mm -hmm. She kills it, right? So this is a deeply offensive, racist film. The film actually has made history. It sold more tickets than any other film in history, unless Mm -hmm. that changed recently. Uh, not not the amount it made because tickets were cheaper were cheaper back then, but the amount of the number of tickets sold. Yeah, it was a movement. I mean, it was the Forrest Gump of its time. It was <laughs> it was a huge film. Mm-hmm. The NAACP denounces the film. Of course, they should. This yeah, it's a horrible film that minimizes the horrors of the of the Civil War, and black theaters refuse to show it. Why would they show it? Mm-hmm. It's a disgusting, vile film. Right. Is the is the cinematography good? They keep saying that. Did it break ground in cinematography? All that bullshit. I'm sure it did. But it's racist as fuck. Full stop. So there is the premiere. Of Gone with the Wind. In Atlanta, Georgia, which is ruled by Jim Crow. Mm-hmm. Heidi McDaniel is one of the stars of the film. She is banned from attending the premiere. She's banned. Mm. She could not attend the premiere of her film. The film stars Vivian Lee and Clark Gable. Clark Gable, who was the superstar of his time. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was like Tom Cruise. He was the big, big star. He was the Robert De Niro of his time, if you will. He wanted to boycott the premiere. Yeah. Because Hattie McDaniel could, couldn't go. Mm-hmm. And he said, I will boycott this. Mm-hmm. Hattie McDaniel 
says, don't do that. Mm -hmm. I want you to go. I want you to go. Don't boycott. And the only reason why he goes is because Hattie McDaniel said, you need to go to the premiere of this film. Because mm. they kind of knew it was going to be a, um, a a big hit. And they, re they reportedly got along really well, Clark Gable and Hattie McDaniel on set. I don't know about Vivian Lee. Mm -hmm. Side note, uh, Betty Davis wanted that role of Scarlett O'Hara. Okay. But she was clapping back at um, movie studios, and they said, mm. hell no. That's a whole <laughs> other story that is not the focus right now. But Betty was on some other burn this movie studio system down. But she wanted that role really bad. But it goes to Vivian Lee. Anyway, so the movie's a big hit. It's a big hit. This makes Clark Gable and Vivian Lee bigger superstars than they already were. It's a huge hit. It gets tons of Oscar nominations. And, of course, Hattie McDaniel was nominated for an Oscar. Now, I do want to say that the NAACP at this point is giving a lot of heat to Hattie McDaniel. Mm. And I know it was 1940. I get it. But the heat that she was receiving was really unfair. Mm. Why is she playing a maid? Why did she accept this kind of character? Why? Now, the other side, their perspective is media is so important. This is one of the biggest films of all time. And here's how you represent us. Mm -hmm. Now, although I despise the movie, what I will say and what Hattie McDaniel always said is that she really avoided playing a docile maid. Mm -hmm. Many of her characters that were servants would push back, would argue. Now, not push back what we would think of today, but just yeah. for this era, this time. And she, re and she pushed for that. She also refused to say the N-word in mm -hmm. Gone with the Wind or any of her other movies. Mm -hmm. She would never say it. So you never hear her saying the N-word, and she was supposed to, but she would not say it in Gone with the Wind. So where Miss Hattie McDaniel had agency, mm -hmm. she would show up. There are some spaces where she just didn't have agency. She just didn't. So Hattie McDaniel um, goes to the Oscars. The producer of the Oscars had to petition to allow her in the room mm. at the hotel, at the Ambassador Hotel had to petition and fight and fight for her to be in the hotel. Within the hotel, there was the Coconut Grove nightclub. That's where it was held. Mm -hmm. But it was segregated. She is the only black woman in the room, Reese. She isn't allowed to sit with the cast. She's not sitting with Vivian Lee or Clark Gable. They have her sit at a separate table, a small table against a wall. Her name is announced as the winner of Best Supporting Actress. She is forced to read a, a pre-written speech. Mm. And I want to give her credit. The speech is written by Ruby Berkeley Goodwin, a close friend of Hattie McDaniel, also a uh, black woman. Mm -hmm. And here is Hattie's speech 84 years ago today. Listen to this. My heart is too full to tell you just how I feel. And may I say thank you. <laughs> God bless you. That's Miss Hattie McDaniel, 84 years ago today, back in 1940. Mm -hmm. There was a party. Later on that night, there was an after party. And they told Hattie McDaniel to go home. Because the party was segregated. Mm -hmm. She wasn't allowed to be there. After this, Hattie McDaniel, her career really suffers. Mm. And she is constantly being attacked by the NAACP. She's being criticized for taking roles where she is perpetuating negative stereotypes. And white filmmakers would only cast her only as domestic servants. She once told the press, she said, quote, I loved Mammy. I think I understood her because my own grandmother worked on a plantation. So after years and years of being uh, attacked by the NAACP, Hattie says this famous line, 
the iconic line. She said, quote, I'd rather play a maid than be a maid. Mm. The NAACP, according to the Hollywood Reporter, uh, disowned her completely. Mm. I mean, I, I really can't put into words how how much she was attacked for these characters. And I want to add, I've only seen Gone with the Wind. I haven't seen her other films. And although I don't like the movie, I, I still stand by. There is some humanity that I feel like Hattie McDaniel put in that character. Mm-hmm. I think she was fighting from her soul. She did understand this character, right? Mm-hmm. And there's something that she did. I see it behind her eyes that I think is really powerful. And it goes beyond just, I mean, the character's name is Mammy. Good God. Mm -hmm. But it goes beyond that character. It's Hattie McDaniel. It's her story. It's It's what she represents as just being this black woman, right? Hattie McDaniel also later on becomes the first black woman to land a radio program. Oh, okay. History, right? So she's finding a way to navigate through this career that, Black folks wanted to be a certain way, and white folks wanted to be a certain way. Uh, sadly, she uh, passes away at the age of 59 from breast cancer, mm. right? And that is in 1952. She has two wishes, two things that she asked for in her, her will. One, it's for her body to be buried in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. The cemetery refused Mm. because she's black. They wouldn't even let her body in this cemetery. Two, it was to give her Academy Award to Howard University. Hmm. But reportedly, the Academy Award was deemed valueless, and it went missing. It went missing from Howard or it went missing? From Howard. Oh, wow. There were rumors that it was thrown out because her reputation was not valued. There were rumors that it was thrown in the uh, Potomac River as a as an act of protest. And there's rumors that maybe it's somewhere in an archival space. But that was one of her wishes for her her Academy Award to uh, be given to an HBCU. So Hattie McDaniel uh, made history, but dealt with a lot of blows. Mm-hmm. And I want us to, um, I wanted to honor her on this day because I understand holding folks accountable and it was a different time. But we have to be, um, add some nuance to our black artists. Mm -hmm. It may not be what you see on the screen. It may not be what you hear on record. I'm not saying don't hold them accountable. You know, it's not like she was, you know, doing some things that these other people do defending, you know, the worst parts of our culture. And, you know, she wasn't doing that. She was trying to work, Mm -hmm. trying to survive. You think about Dorothy Dandridge. She refused to play a maid Mm -hmm. and they made her suffer. So whether you played the maid or you didn't play the maid as a black woman during this era, you still suffered. Yeah. You still suffered. So I just wanted to show love to Miss Hattie McDaniel. She won that Academy Award. I'm not a big fan of the Oscars. I don't really care. But if I were an actor, you know, I would care, obviously. That's the creme de la creme. Me as a writer, I I care about the New York Times bestsellers list, so I don't want to demean anybody who has that dream, Mm -hmm. black or white, right? But shout out on this day. I can't imagine what she went through. I can't imagine what it felt like to get heat from your, your, your barely allowed in the room. Mm. And then you have your own community who feels like you perpetuate stereotypes, mm-hmm. you know? So the beauty is a lot of us have grown and evolved and learned since then. But shout out to the late, great Hattie McDaniel. Mm. 
Anything you want to add, Reese? That was that was so enlightening, Clay. And it's messed up because in the end, she got done wrong by the white folks, got done wrong by the black folks. So it was like, damn. <laughs> Can't win for losing. So it's sad, but I think that I always find it interesting where people expect you to have some 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 loyalty. And I, I think it's fair for black people to expect black people who represent us, right? To have some loyalty to our community. But to make those demands, you have to co- accompany that with compassion and empathy and understanding and a layer of protection. You can't just, you know, run somebody over the coals, but then you don't invite them back in in some way. Like there has to be a way to come back home. And if you don't offer that, then you should just leave them be, you know, leave them alone. You know, why are you sitting up there dragging somebody, but then you don't have a, a, a safe space for them to land, you know, for for Howard, whatever happened with it to happen, that's sad. That's really sad because she still valued that institution enough. And she still valued the black community enough to, to make that, you know, to make that request. And it's people that's won Oscars for worse now at this point. <laughs> and they would happily be accepted into any uh, HBCU, black museum, whatever. So I don't know. I mean, I get it. it it's hard when we, when we feel like so much is at stake and how we're represented. But at the end of the day, there's still human beings behind that, that we should, we should hold some space and some grace for. Yeah. And to be honest, I don't think I made this the worst thing somebody could be. I mean, damn, you know, absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. It'd be one absolutely thing if she was in not. blackface. Okay. I, I, I can understand. That might be, you know, like, okay, girl, you know, but uh, what's the problem with, with being a maid? You know, the other thing, too, and I know some folks won't agree with this at all, but um, I remember when I interviewed Diane Carroll, the late, great Diane Carroll, many years ago, Mm -hmm. and we talked about Halle Berry's performance for Monsters Ball. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, I was in an interview with somebody a few weeks ago, and they said, how dare Halle, considering, like, Losing Isaiah is an incredible film, like, Halle Mm -hmm. did some really good work before Monsters Ball. And she said... "Um, I was in an interview and they were saying, how dare Halle win this Oscar for this, this character who, you know, is, um, you know, the, yeah. the graphic sex scene with Billy Bob Thornton and the whole yeah. bit. And one of the things that uh, uh, Diane Carroll told me, she said, I thought that we broke this barrier down. Mm. I, I received the same heat for Claudine. How dare mm-hmm. I play a uh, welfare mother? Mm-hmm. And what I thought was, one, I thought in Monsters Ball, I thought Hallie killed it. Mm-hmm. I thought outside of the sex scene, even outside of that, there was. I thought she was acting her ass off. I thought it yeah. was incredible. Yeah. And up the other actors she was up against that year, she deserved it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, 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 and I get, well, how come she didn't get it for so-and-so? And I, I understand all that. But one of the things that Diane Carroll was talking about is that black women, actresses, they are always judged on, not outside of the performance, but... Uh, was the character respectable enough? Mm-hmm. And she said, I thought I tore this down. I, th- I thought we tore this down. So, yo, was it a good performance? Right. I mean, when Hallie's son died, uh, the character's son died in that movie, I just, I, she was sobbing in the hospital room. I just thought, oh, she's killing it. Yeah. She's killing it. And yeah. the movie was about the death penalty. It was about obesity. It right. It was about racism. There yep. were some levels to it. So, I remember Miss Diane Carroll saying that to me, and I just thought, wow, you know, the plight of a of a, a black actress, a black content creator, you know, it must be difficult. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are roles that some people play that might make me cringe, but I believe in a free black people, and freedom means the ability sometimes to offend, sometimes to be cringe. And sometimes to do things that not everybody gonna like. And I think that's okay. And I think if we are constantly trying to put people in a box and then you have people who have problems with those boxes, we're right. never going to really be free because, you know, now it's too much black excellence, you know? It's, now, yeah, that, that's the, the Tyler Perry critique. Yeah, you know, then well, now, it's like, well, now it's... <laughs> with Bel Air, it was always black excellence. Like, it's okay, now black excellence is a problem. So it's like, people can't ever make up their mind of what they want to be mad about. So that's yeah, why I just what, give people the, the right space. black? Yeah. What's the right kind of representation of blackness? I I don't I just don't know. 
I don't think that there is a such thing. I think there's a representation exactly. of black people as human beings. If there's a humanity yeah. in the character, that to me yeah. is the representation of blackness. When we are not humans, then regardless of whether they are lawyer, sex worker, right. may right. police you're just officer, a tool. Yeah, exactly. Then that's that's problematic. But there's humanity right. in blackness, and I wish that people would stop trying to divorce the two. And when you divorce the two, then you don't give people the space to have the range of human experiences that people have. 